Hello and welcome to our special program to the point. It's election season. Although the five states are going to elections, all the parties, specifically the national parties and the national alliances are putting their respective electoral positions in place as far as 2014 general elections are concerned. Same is the case with regional parties and the revival of the so-called third front. Recently, we have had a, a huge gathering being organized by several regional parties against the communal forces. We have with us uh, one of the part, uh, you know, one of the senior leaders of the party who, which participated in this particular uh, uh, congregation, Mr. S. Sudhakar Reddy, General Secretary of Communist Party of India (CPI). So, welcome to the show. Thank you. First thing which I want to know is. This particular uh, rally, which you organized in the national capital just recently, is considered the first step towards reorganizing the third front forces. Almost 14 parties uh, attended the rally, if I'm not wrong. And uh, some of them uh, were senior leaders like Samajwadi Party's uh, President Bulayam Singh Yadav and uh, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and several other leaders from other left parties as well. But there were a few parties which were in, invited to this congregation like BJD, NAIA, DMK. Their senior leaders, the topmost leaders chose to stay away. How do you look at that? First of all, it is not a rally. It is a convention of the people's unity and against communalism. As a matter of fact, this is not intended as a step towards the third front as has been suggested by a section of the media. In the background of the Mujafarpur incidents and in the background of communal atmosphere that is being provoked in some states of UP, Bihar, Assam and other places, we thought there is a necessity to make the people vigilant about the danger of communalism before the elections. So we decided some political parties and prominent individuals who are fighting against communalism, who stand for secularism, should unite together and then give a call for national unity of the people in defense of secularism and to fight back the offense of communalism. There are several political parties who participated. There are some parties who are secular but could not be invited because of many reasons. It is not that only these parties are secular and the other parties who are outside are not secular. There is still a very big section of the people, political forces who are secular. And for the absence of people like Jailalitha, Madam Jairalita is in assembly session. So she informed earlier itself, it may be difficult for her, and she has to attend a court case in Bangalore up to 30th till yesterday. She, her personal presence was ordered by the court. Then the second thing is uh, Ms. Naveen Patnaik, who was supposed to be a, one of the speakers of the session. There was a terrific uh, cyclone in Varisa. Naturally, on the part of the Chief Minister, the top priority is to give, help the people. But uh, top leaders from their parties attended the convention on behalf of them. Madam Jailalitha has sent her speech. As a matter of fact, her speech was read out, not the representative's speech. Likewise, from BJD also, they expressed full support to the convention and its ideas. Uh, one thing which you mentioned is that uh, the, the uh, immediate uh, trigger, rather one of the major uh, reasons uh, behind having this convention was uh, the unfortunate incidents which happened in uh, Mujafanagar district in uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh. But, uh, and uh, incidentally, uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav, the Samajwadi party chief, was uh, present at this particular convention. His party uh, runs uh, the government in the state of Uttar Pradesh. 
there were several parties and several leaders who were present out there who were critical of the Samajwadi Party government and the handling of that particular situation in Muzaffarnagar. Don't you think, think it was it was contradiction of sorts to have uh, you know somebody who was being criticized as also one of the important dignitaries on the platform? I don't think there is any contradiction as such, because uh, when there is in democracy, it is quite natural that some parties will be critical, particularly the parties who are playing the role of the opposition. When the Samajwadi party is in the government in Uttar Pradesh, and communal clashes have taken place. Even for us, the communists, we are also critical. They could have taken more stronger steps to curb these communal clashes. But at the same time, we have no doubt, no doubt about the credentials of secularism of Samajwadi Party. That is the biggest political party in Uttar Pradesh, now ruling that state. And for all these years, after the formation of Samajwadi Party, they are always fighting against communalism and fighting for values of secularism. Some parties may be critical about it, but uh, it doesn't matter. One of the very crucial uh, points which come to the mind when you talk about uh, this convention against communalism is the very fact that uh, some important regional players like Trinamool Congress, Bahujan Samaj Party, YSR Congress, they did not attend this particular convention. Uh, either they were not invited or they chose not to attend. The point is, does that not show a rift between uh, the, the, uh, the secular parties or the secular fronts which you are mentioning about out here? It is true that some of the, I did tell earlier that there are several parties who are secular but who are not part of the convention. <clears throat> we have some limitation for this uh, convention. The organizing committee decided that uh, as far as possible that one party, major secular party, should be invited from each state. Mamata Energy is taking a stand totally against the communists. I am sure she would have refused to attend a meeting to share the platform with the leftists. So there is no point in inviting her and getting a refusal from her. And uh, not only YSR Jagan, Telugu Desham Party yes. in Andhra, yeah, one of the major. then TRS, Telangana Rashtra Samiti, they are also secular parties in that state. We did discuss about this. And uh, as a matter of fact, Chandrababu Naidu was always with the left and secular parties in the last several years. In 99, though he joined with the NDA in supporting the formation of the government at that time. In the latter period, uh, he shifted from that angle and he decided to be with the secular parties. This time, we sounded him, but uh, there was no positive reply from his side. It is for him to decide whether to be with the secular forces or with the communal forces or he will be still playing a neutral role without participating this side or that side. As far as uh, YSR Jagan party is concerned, as the state is divided so much now because of the pro-Telangana and anti-Telangana agitations, we thought that it will send wrong signals if we invite uh, a party which is taking a stand for Samaj Kandra and organizing a big public rally in Hyderabad just three days before this national convention. If Jagan Reddy attends, naturally in Telangana area there will be wrong signals. So likewise, TRS attending may send, send wrong signals to the coastal Andhra region. Yes, you're right. Uh, we'll take a short break out here. Yeah. Welcome back. Mr. Reddy, the General Secretary of uh, CPI is still with us. Uh, sir, 
Let us now come back to the difficult question and the tough question rather I must say politically speaking uh, and that is that uh, despite the fact that there were 14 parties sharing the dice at this convention against communalism, why is everyone, almost all senior leaders from these parties shying away from declaring their partnership as a revival of the third front, not many months to go for the general elections. Isn't this the right time to do so? It is true, but uh, this uh, platform, as I explained earlier, is not intended to form a political front to fight the elections in 2014. We will have time. We will certainly discuss these things and there will be some sort of understandings in different states between some left parties and uh, regional parties and all that. I would like to clarify one thing that we are against the third front, the concept. Okay. There is a difference between a third front and an alternative front. Mm -hmm. Madam Mamata Benerji was also proposing a front, federal front or something like that. Just uh, uniting all the non-Congress, non-BJP parties, a third front may emerge. But it is not going to make any difference. As far as the left is concerned, we are of the opinion that Congress and BJP are the two sides of the same coin. They don't have much of a difference on the economic policies and political policies. The BJP, though the principal opposition party in the country, is uh, continuously supporting the foreign policy of the government, which is certainly a tilt towards US imperialism. There, though, for the uh, sake of opposition criticizing the FDI, it is the BJP government which tried to bring the FDI in the country. And they are not really honest in opposing the FDI in the country and all that. As a matter of fact, we are also not against the FDI if it is going to give employment-oriented technical transfer, etc. Mm -hmm. But if it is only for commercial angle and to loot the country, naturally we the left oppose it. So from the left parties, we want alternative economic policies. We just doesn't want a change in the uh, so, so chair of Chief Prime Minister. Chair of the Prime Minister, the person who sits in the chair of the Prime Minister. So you're saying that you're, you're against the concept of third front, but you're looking for an alternative front. So in effect, do we uh, understand that you are averse to the idea of calling that congregation of parties, uh, which might, you know, as you're saying that there is a possibility, you're averse to calling that third front. The name itself is something which is, uh, which is not... Yes, it is a little allergic. For us. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that allergy because of uh, the past experiences? There have been uh, three, four prime ministers no, which have been given by the third we front? We had some sort of a program. Program-based pro front cannot be a third front. Mm -hmm. A program-based front will be an alternative front. So we feel that we should be called an alternative front. And that type of front, as you are telling that uh, some political parties or ours are shying away we do think there is no possibility of an alternative front also emerging before the elections. Okay. There is a possibility of this type of front emerging only in the post-election period. The reason is simple, that uh, some of these political parties may not have adjustments either with the left or another party inside the state. But in the larger interest of the nation, we think after the elections, whichever parties can play an important role in the alternative front, who accept the pro-people's anti-corporate, anti-communal policies, these parties can come together. No, but, but there is a possibility that there will be some sort of local adjustments at the state level even before the election. Given the present situation, don't you think that it would be much politically, uh, 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 you know, uh, 
uh, important and uh, proper to go ahead and have a pre-poll uh, alliance rather than have a post-poll alliance also given the fact that there has been a convention which has been uh, already set in place by the then uh, president of India, uh, Shankar Dal Sharma saying that uh, you know if, if none of the uh, uh, you know, if, they, if none of the parties who was the highest number and the second highest number of MPs are able to form the government, then let's go in for the uh, the pre-poll alliance, which is the highest uh, number of MPs. So, don't you think that will be a wonderful chance uh, for the alternative front or third front, if uh, you know, you, though you you might not call it, to take a shot at uh, forming the government post uh, 2014 elections? No, the practical problems are coming in the way of this alternative front forming before the elections. As I explained that the, if there may be a front, but these front parties will be contesting against each other in a state election. Mm -hmm. That doesn't give a good signal for the people. It is desirable if there is a possibility for an alternative front to be formed at the national level before the elections. But we don't think it is going to create any serious problem if we form such an alternative front because the signal is clear, what we would like to have. We are fighting against the anti-people's policies of this government, uh -huh. against the liberalization of economic policies, uh -huh. and at the same time against the communal angle of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh -huh. Bharatiya Janata Party not only stands for fundamentalism, but also a pro-corporate rightist economic policies. Uh -huh. So who are the parties against these? is more or less clear. So in that the circumstances, we feel a post-poll alliance, post-poll understanding of building a platform of alternative policies. It will be more practically possible and it is more desirable at that juncture. Okay, wonderful. Let's take a short break out here. Welcome back. Uh, Mr. Sudhakar Reddy, General Secretary of the CPI is still with us and we are engaged in a very interesting conversation on uh, uh, the possibilities of uh, the third front or an alternative front, be it the pre-poll or post-poll. So you're saying that the desirable, uh, it would be desirable to have it pre-poll, but since there are constraints, there are political constraints, even having it post-poll, uh, that's, that's post-poll uh, in 2014, uh, will not be a problem. Now, what I want to say is that whether you have it pre-poll or you have it post-poll, one basic limitation of the alternative front or the third front is the leadership and the ideological clashes between these regional parties as well as policy dissensions. You know, left parties would like to have a policy go one way, uh, the other regional parties might want to have that uh, crucial policy go the other way and then there are, let's not forget the ideological differences as well and leadership clashes. There are several regional leaders who consider themselves fit enough to occupy the chair of the prime minister. See, as a matter of fact, uh, I was telling that uh, there will be not only no problem of post-poll alliance, it is more desirable for certain reasons. For example, UPA2 is formed in the post-poll period. Mm -hmm. There are certain parties who fought against each other. For example, Congress, Samajwadi, Bahujan Samaj Party, all three parties clashed with each other, but in the 2009 election, after the government is formed, mm -hmm. both Samajwadi and Bahujan Samaj Party decided to extend their support to UPA too, for simple reason that they don't want a communal government or the BJP government to come to power. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if we are going to have an adjustment with one political party in one region and fight against the other party, that will be closing the door for other parties to come into the alternative front. Why should such a situation come? That uh, if these parties fight against each other, as there is no possibility that all the regional parties in each state come together to fight together against uh, Congress or BJP. Mm -hmm. They may try their luck and after the election, naturally there will be sometimes that's a possibility even earlier in a united front, both Bohujan Samaj Party and Samajwadi Party together supported the United Front government. Uh -huh. 
maybe somebody will be inside somebody will be supporting from outside okay so you, so, you, so basically you're saying is the basic uh, uh, tactic and the political strategy is to go ahead and keep the floor open for everyone once the elections uh, have, are over and the final figures are out then uh, the regional outfits can sit together and uh, you know try and find out an alternative yeah. front. in andhra but, there are more regional parties uh, fighting against each other very bitterly, but they are all secular. And as, as such, you mentioned TDP, TRS, and uh, the the YSR Congress as well. But my question out here is that in a post poll scenario, in a post poll scenario, things might go a little awry. Uh, you know, for example, uh, the regional parties uh, might have might want to go ahead and uh, you know share a pie of power with uh, either of the uh, national parties or national uh, you know the two fronts which are already there bjp led nda and congress led upa let me uh, start uh, the example with you only the left parties only in 2004 after the elections were over the left parties decided to support a, a congress led alliance to power in 2009 when the elections were over Mamta Energy led the TMC decided to support uh, an, uh, an alliance led by Congress led UPA, wherein earlier, 10 years ago, she was a part of uh, the NDA led government. So there are too many cross connections happening. Uh, how do you plan to go ahead and deal with this? Yes, it is quite possible that uh, as there will be no commitment, naturally, some regional parties may take such a stand. It may be out of opportunism, it may be because of the compulsions in the post poll scenario or because of the compulsions of their own state politics to fight against such and such party to keep them out the other party may try to go these type of things do happen but in general what we think the secular parties who are against communalism and at the same time who are dissatisfied with the present economic policies pursued by the UPA too naturally will have to come together on this alternative platform. We hope that it is going to be quite successful uh, experiment in the post poll scenario. You were telling that it was a failure. I would like to ask, what about the NDA? Is it not a failure? It failed. There were 24 parties when mm -hmm. Atal Bihari Vajpayee was the prime minister of the country. Mm -hmm. But most of the parties have gone out. And in the latter period, UPA too, it is broken. Many parties who were supporting UPA too, Mamata Banerjee came out. Earlier, the left parties from UPA one has come out. So this type of political permutations and combinations will get changed. And we want for the last three, four years that there should be realignment of political forces. Such, such realignment is taking place now. And in the post poll scenario, it will be more clear. Okay. One, one counter argument uh, to the last point you mentioned in your answer is that uh, uh, as far as NDA and UPA are concerned, NDA at least ran the government for five years. UPA has uh, ran the government for two successive terms. As far as the uh, governments headed by uh, the Third Front are concerned, they lasted only uh, a couple of uh, months, say one year, one and a half year, uh, around a little less than two years. And also, a government headed by Third Front had always uh, been on the crutches of uh, the support from either of the national parties. So, uh, is that something not, uh, which, which is the biggest impediment to having a Third Front government or an alternative front government being installed at the centre post-2014? It is true that earlier the government did not last long. But uh, there were governments Janata experiment also lasted longer period than one year, one and a half year and all that. The Indian political situation is such that no single political party can form the government. And now, according to the latest political scenario, no single front also can get the majority. So we are not sure what is going to happen, but uh, at present, as we understand, in percentage of the votes, maybe in the parliament members also. The majority may be non-Congress, non-BJP parties. Together, these parties are less than 48% Congress and the BJP. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because our electoral system, that uh, the parties with the 25%, 23% of votes, they form the government sometimes. 
That's why we would like to have a proportional representation system which is followed in more than 89 countries in the world mm -hmm. in democracy. But uh, this election 2014, I'm sure, is going to be continuously in the same way as is being held now. We do hope this time the possibility is much better than the previous. Okay, great. So the situation is still fluid, but uh, the hopes uh, are, are definitely there uh, on, on all political fronts. It's not only uh, yours about the uh, alternative front, the same uh, seems to be the situation in the ND and UPA camp as well. Let's wait and watch uh, till 2014 uh, general elections are over. Not much time left, uh, quite a few months, around six to seven months, and then we'll uh, uh, have the final results with us. So this was uh, uh, the General Secretary of uh, Communist Party of India, Mr. S. Sudhakar Reddy, in a freewheeling conversation with us on the entire idea of having an alternate front and whether it's feasible or not. We'll come back next week with a different personality and a different topic. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.